Good morning again. If you know this song, sing along with me. Just going to sing a little short verse to help usher in. As I try to get this stuff together, technology. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. The blood, it soothes my doubt and calms my fears and dries up all my tears, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power, for it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose. It will never. Holy God, I thank you this morning for another opportunity, Lord, to share your word. Thank you today, O oh God, for the empty tomb. Thank you today, O oh God, for the resurrection that continues to lead and guide us today. May your word fall on good ground today, and may we forever be changed by our encounters with you. Thank you, O oh God. We don't take it for granted. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And I'm going to read from the message version our scripture text from Mark 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Shalom, brought spices so they could embalm him. Very early on Sunday morning, as the sun rose, they went to the tomb. They worried out loud to each other, who will roll back the stone from the tomb for us? Then they looked up and saw it had been rolled back. It was a huge stone and walked right in. They saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in all white. They were completely taken aback. They were astonished. And he said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, the one they nailed to the cross. He's been raised up. He's no longer here. You can see for yourselves that the place is empty. Now, on your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going on ahead of you to Galilee, where 
You'll see him there exactly as he said. They got out as fast as they could, besides themselves, their heads swimming, stunned. They said nothing to anyone. And so I want to speak on the subject of what's next. Right? As Christians, Easter is many things to us. It's too big of a miracle to mean just one thing, right? Easter means the tomb was empty. It means that Christ is risen. It means that Jesus has defeated death. It means that eternal life is real and that death does not end our life with God. That all who live and believe would never die. And so I just want to point out a couple of things from this scripture this morning to, to help us on the what's next, right? Easter comes every year. I've been on this earth 57 years. For 57 years, Easter has come, right? Whatever age you are, Easter has come, right? So what's next? We talk about it. We, we sing songs, right? Last week, we came in with the, with the palm branches. You know, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And then we had Monday, Thursday service. In the upper room with Jesus and the disciples, having communion. And then Jesus was betrayed by one of his closest, Judas, right? And from Thursday to Friday, he suffered a, a, a beating that I know for sure none of us could ever take it. And then he was hung on the cross. He was hung on the cross. He was nailed to the cross. He had thorns on his head. And he died and he gave up the spirit. Why? So that we could be put back in right relation with the Father. Right? After Genesis, after the fall of Adam and Eve, sin came in. And Jesus came to redeem us from the sin and put us back in right relationship. So we no longer have, have to slaughter any animals in the altar, but we can go and pray to the Father ourselves. You don't need me to go and pray. You can pray for yourself, right? Amen. Amen. Because the numbers are not even. There's so many more of you than it is of me. Right? But what I find the most interesting about Mark's depiction of the resurrection is one, it ended at the eighth verse, which was read today, the first eight. If you look at the Bible, depending, depending on what, uh, which one you have, it will say these verses from verses 9 to verse 20 were added years later. Right? That's another sermon for another day. We'll talk about that. But it's in there, Right? And the question is always, well, why did they have to? Because in our humanness, the way this chapter ended, from what we heard, right, the women left, they were terrified, and they didn't say anything to anybody, but they went on the journey that they were told to go, tell the disciples, and make sure you tell Peter, too. And that's where it ends. But that's where the story begins. And that's where the what next, right? That what next question is answered. Think about this. As the, the women journeyed to the tomb and they were talking, what's the question that they asked? Who will roll away the stone? How are we going to move that big thing Right, can you see it? They're walking. Mary, I don't know. 
I can't do it. Can you do it? Maybe the three of us together. Now, girl, you know that stone is too heavy for us to move. We can't call those disciples. Do you just see Peter? He just ran past us going the other way. He's no help to us. They went and locked themselves in the upper room. They were scared. And I'm not male bashing, but them ladies, <laughs> the, the, the ladies kept moving forward on the mission that they were assigned. Amen? They, they, they had a mission, and they were determined to fulfill what they were asked to do. And they went. And when they got there, the stone had already been moved. And I could say, oh, praise God, look, somebody moved it. Yes. To only go in to see that Jesus was not there. Oh, my gosh. Who took Jesus? His body is gone. I was there. I saw him hanging on the cross. I saw him die. I, the curtain was split down the middle. There was darkness, and the dead rose, and they walked. Where is he? And there was an angel there, and he said, well, basically, why are you looking for the, the living among the dead? He's risen. He told you these things. And initially, right, it didn't kick in. You know when somebody tells you something that happened, and initially the thought is, what? What do you mean? Say it again. I just want clarification. Say it again. And they, they were amazed because things started coming back what Jesus has said to them, right? From that point, and them moving, journeying back to go find the disciples and to tell Peter what had happened. What's next is this. They talked about the stone. That was their worry. And when they got there, the stone was gone. What stones in your life is stopping you from doing what God wants you to do. And he's brought somebody or done something to move it, and you're stuck. You're wondering, how did that happen? Is this real? Did that really happen? Should I trust this? Come on, you know how we are. Should I don't know. This is too good to be true. It can't possibly be free. This can't possibly be. And then you think about what you've been praying for, what you've been asking God to do in your life, whatever the situation, and God does it, and we don't. Still, I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one, right? What's next? The women, they kept moving forward, even though they didn't understand, but they kept moving in the direction of victory, of freedom. The stone was moved when they got there. Check. When they went in and the body was gone, they didn't all fall out on the ground. They didn't run away like the disciples did and run and hide and cower. I suppose they got together and said, you know what? I, I don't understand this right now, but I do remember Jesus talking about this. That must have been what he meant. We have to do something. We can't sit by and not do anything or say anything. Now, they may not have said anything to the first couple of people that they passed by because they were trying to get to those disciples and say, listen, come out 
left that room. Come downstairs. Jesus, he's alive. We got work to do. It's the same with us. We have work to do as believers, as, as people, as people that live in this world today. We have a mission. We've been commissioned to share the love of Jesus with everybody we come in contact with. Everybody. Whether they live in your household or they don't. If you go to the grocery store, if you go to the gas station, if you go on a cruise, you go on vacation, you in Myrtle Beach, you in Florida, you in California, we're supposed to share the love of Christ with everybody that we encounter. Even if you just go to Hershey Park, share. Share the love of Jesus. Give hope to the hopeless. Take care of those who cannot take care of themselves. That is the message of the resurrection. We are not supposed to remain the same where we are right now. We're supposed to be resurrected with Jesus. When Jesus rose up and defeated death and hell, he gave us the power to share this love with everybody. No matter who you are, no matter what walk of life you came from, no matter what you've been through, we're supposed to show the love of Christ. We're supposed to love our enemies. Oh, pastor, I can't love them. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know what Jesus did for you. He hung on that cross. If we could have had handled that, he wouldn't have done it. I watched the passion of the Christ. I said I wasn't. I did it. And it's gut-wrenching to think. I remember as a kid in school, if somebody said, you know what, somebody said that after school, they were going to fight you. I would do everything in my power to avoid them to get home. You know how little kids did in school. They just, for no reason, right? I couldn't handle that. I know I couldn't handle that. Let's be honest. If my mother said I was going to get a whooping for something I did, I hid under the bed. I couldn't take that. So I know I could not handle what Jesus took upon himself for our sins to redeem us. So what's next? Share the love. Let's start there. Share the love that Jesus has given you. Each and every one of us has something that we can think about that God has done for us that we can share with somebody. Pay it forward. That's an even better word. Pay it forward. Right? That's it. That's all. I would say it's not rocket science, but we have a rocket scientist who's some, somewhere up in here, mathematician and, and everything, right? It's, it's not that difficult. Let's, lo let's start loving on each other again. Let's start giving hope to each other again. Let's not, let's get out of the status quo and keep doing the things, well, I've always done that because my mother did it, and I've always done this because my father did it or my grandmother did it. Let's do something new. Let's do something new. Let's change the narrative. Let's 
must live as resurrected people the way that Jesus intended for us to live. Amen? Can, can we try to do it this week? If it's just one person, show them some love. Show them some love. You'll be surprised at the difference it will make for, for them in that instant. You can see the, the, the worry and the trouble just melting off of people sometimes just because somebody showed kindness to them. Let's start there. And then let's start sharing our stories with one another. Okay, share your story with me. I'll get up here and share the story. I won't, I won't get no names. Share the stories. Amen? So we can encourage each other to keep passing it on. Can we do that? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Something. You can talk to me. It's okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Amen. Listen, y'all talk. Let's hide up here with this robe on, too. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to finish up. I'm trying to, you know, get to the end. Okay? Amen. Amen. We, we serve a, uh, we serve an awesome God who thought it not selfish to take on, on our burdens, on our sins, and go to the cross to die and to come back for us. I think that's the least we can do is start being kinder to one another. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat>